Well, Janet, good to have you here on the All About Feed chat. Uh, today we are going to talk about corn, and especially corn in the US. Uh, there is a lot of differences between corn, right? Yes, there are. And in the U.S., we see differences based on region that that corn is grown in. And the genetics that are selected for growth in that region can influence everything from how much starch and protein is put down in that kernel, but more specifically on even things like the heat increment that's needed to get that corn to grow to its optimum potential. Mm -hmm. And so as nutritionists, we always have to think about where did that corn come from, what conditions was it grown under, and then interpret what that means for the feeding value of that corn. Mm -hmm. and, and as a uh, nutritionist, do you know in advance uh, what corn you have in stock? Most feed mills will have what they call a pull area which means they will take corn from different growing areas, usually within probably 200 mile radius of that feed mill. The exception would be those feed mills that are on a rail slide or a barge area where they can pull corn from further away. Mm -hmm. The beauty of today's technology for feed mills and nutritionists is to use near infrared technology to identify a corn quality. Mm -hmm. And how could you m mitigate the differences between batches of corn? Well, that's where things like feed enzymes come in, because you can use feed enzymes to even out that variability that you get on corn, because enzymes, be it proteases, amylases, or xylanases, are designed to improve certain characteristics of that incoming corn to make it more digestible for the pigs or poultry that may be consuming it. And what would be the go-to enzyme? in this case? That would depend a little bit on what the issue is in any given year. So in years where we've had a lot of mechanical drying applied to corn, that creates more binding between starch and protein. So in those years, a protease and an amylase together are an ideal mix. Mm -hmm. But any given year, you do have issues with digestibility of storage uh, rabinoxylans that are in that cell wall fraction, and that's where your xylanases come in. So we think of a xylanase as a door opener for corn, and amylase and protease, the improvers of accessibility of protein and starch to that pig or chicken. Mm -hmm. And how would you see the end results or the improvement in the animal? You would see that as more consistent performance and generally better feed uniformity or feed conversion. And that's what we're all looking for. Well, thank you very much. Exactly. It makes perfect sense. Ah, pleasure to be here today.